Queen Chrysalis Reforms. Uh, accidentally. Written by Rainbow Double Dash. Chapter 1. Tragedy Strikes. As with most things that had gone wrong in Chrysalis's life recently, it had seemed like a good idea at the time. She'd seen the cave that she, T-Rex, and Cozy Glow had been trying to reach for days right in front of her and surged forward, eager to claim the bewitching bell and finally get this whole trip over with. Instead, zap! Ah! Chrysalis cried as some invisible force shocked her and threw her back. She landed with as much dignity as the true queen of the changelings could in such a situation, uh, which was to say not much. There was a bit of skidding. She tasted snow in her mouth. She shapeshifted herself a little extra body fat to keep out the cold. At least Cozy and T-Rex didn't laugh. As she picked herself up, T-Rex tromped right on by her and up to the cave's mouth, reaching out with a hand. A yellow flash struck him as he did, and he grunted in pain. Cozy flitted around to in front of him, looking at his hand and where the force field was. Can you absorb it? She asked. T-Rex shrugged helplessly. I can only absorb magic from living beings. Chrysalis idly wondered if that meant if she turned herself into a rock, she wouldn't have to worry about T-Rex absorbing her magic anymore. Questions for later, as she continued to brush herself free of snow. Like her? Cozy asked. Chrysalis's eyes shot up at that, and she found the centaur and the Pegasus filly, if that was what she really was, Chrysalis had her doubts, both looking at her. She hissed, stooping low and into a battle stance. Betrayal! She exclaimed, getting ready to defend herself. Not betrayal, Cozy said, just as Chrysalis was about to blast her. Teamwork. If Tyrek absorbs your energy, he might be strong enough to break through. The filly had a point, at least in theory. There was the minor point of T-Rex stripping her of her power, however. And then? She demanded. Then he gives it back. Cozy provided. I do? T-Rex asked. Mm-hmm. It might work, but... How do I know you won't take my magic and leave me? Chrysalis demanded. Cozy flew on over, all big eyes and innocence. Would we do that to you? A gesture from Chrysalis was the only response that merited. Cozy's expression relented. Okay, normally, yes, we would. She looked at T Rex expectantly. T Rex stared at Chrysalis before sighing. <sighs> I'll give you your magic back, he droned. It might work, Chrysalis thought again. Certainly, it was better than anything Chrysalis could come up with, much to her own chagrin. T-Rex had no love for her to take to empower herself, and Cozy was just one pony, probably. But she was the mighty queen of the changelings. Even without gorging herself, she was still the equal of a powerful unicorn mage by herself. And that awesome power added to t Rex's own... <sighs> Crystal aside. Do it, she said. t Rex grinned, then opened his mouth wide as his orange magic appeared between his horns. Chrysalis braced herself to fight back on instinct, but then remembered that Literally just now, she decided to willingly give up and share her magic. She was willingly letting this happen. T Rex magic struck her. She didn't fight back, opening herself up, sending her own magic forward and towards the centaur, wanting to get this whole thing over and done with as quickly as possible. It was painful, though not as much as it might have been had she not been sharing it. But she felt her magic leaving her, and she felt herself growing hungrier and hungrier. Magic was love, after all, to a changeling. Wait. She was a changeling. 
She was the changeling. Changelings hate love, use love to power their magic. More love meant more magic. That's how she had once been the equal of Celestia herself, even if only briefly, by gorging herself on the love of shining armor. Love and magic were the same thing. Magic was love, love was magic. She was sharing magic. She was sharing love. Wait. She tried, but it was too late. Tirek took all her freely given, offered up, fully shared love, and Chrysalis changed. Chapter 2 Denial. No, 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 Neither T-Rex nor Cozy noticed, Cozy getting into position while T-Rex was too enamored with the return of his power. She was vaguely aware of T-Rex shooting his magic forward and tearing a hole for the force field and Cozy shooting through. But she had bigger problems. She noticed something happening to her hooves first. Stop it! She demanded, pawing at her hooves to try and get the holes in them to stop closing. It didn't work. There was a flash from above her. Chrysalis glanced up and saw her horn had straightened itself out, its beautiful twists gone save for a slight jagged edge at the bottom. And her hair, once wonderfully thin and slick, poofed out, becoming thick and fluffy aquamarine at the roots but fading to lime green at the tips. Stop it! She demanded again. But... It was no use. A glow appeared around her chest. Orange fur erupted from the base of her neck back to her elytra. She tried shifting a hoof into a blade to cut it off, but she had just given most of her love slash magic to T-Rex. Her hoof wouldn't change. Another flash from a dock revealed that her tail's hair had gone the way of her mane. I don't want this! Chrysalis cried. Her carapace glowed and shimmered. The base of her hooves were now orange, but the color swiftly paled and transitioned to a cream white. And... And was that... Fuzz? Yes, it was. Exactly what she'd feared. The worst thing in the world. The reformed changelings weren't just garishly colorful. They were fuzzy. Another flash from behind drew her attention. Oh no. Come on! She demanded. But it was too late, and the change didn't care about her objections anyway. Her wings had multiplied from two to four. They'd elongated, and they'd turned purple, concealed beneath a pair of purple elytra, while her underbelly had become lime green. Chrysalis was so busy staring at herself that she barely noticed a flying filly hitting a snow pile near her. She did notice when the filly emerged from it, holding something aloft at her hooves. Ta-da! Cozy exclaimed. The reformed queen of the changelings glared at Cozy's choice of words. Cozy looked back at her, as did t -Rex. Um... The centaur ventured, holding up one finger. Chrysalis, what did you do to your mane? Chapter 3 Anger. Give me my magic back. Chrysalis demanded, horn glowing blue. Blue! Blue! Not the royal and imperial and wonderful green it was supposed to be, but blue! Tyrik and Cozy still stared at her. What happened? Cozy asked. I reformed! You Idiot! Chrysalis exclaimed, turning to hiss at Cozy. She paused as she did and ran her tongue over her teeth. Her eyes widened. My things? Where are my things? Why did you reform? T-Rex asked. Chrysalis turned on the centaur. I'm a changeling. Love is magic. Magic is love. I shared my magic, so I shared my love. And now look at me! Look at me! Give me my magic back now! T-Rex did, much to the queen's surprise, 
was some part of her imagined it was as much to try and calm her down than anything. It didn't work. Chrysalis had rather hoped that doing so would revert her to her previous form, her true form. But while her stomach filled up and her power fully returned, she still looked like she'd had a terrible accident in both a paint store and a hair salon. She screamed, wings buzzing. She could still do a proper changeling scream at least. She whirled on Cozy Glow. Just share your magic, Chrysalis. It's the only way, Chrysalis. It'll make T-Rex strong enough, Chrysalis. Now look at me! How was I supposed to know? Cozy demanded. I'm just a kid. I don't know about changelings. Is it permanent? T-Rex asked, poking Chrysalis in her cheek. She whirled and tried to bite him, but his reflexes were too fast and he pulled away. Did you know you're fuzzy now? Of course I know! Cozy lifted herself up off the ground, waves buzzing as she went over to T-Rex's side, still clutching the bewitching bell. Look, I can tell this is upsetting you, but maybe... You should look on the bright side. Cats and farm changelings make their own love, so now you'll never go hungry again. That's good, isn't it? Blue, a cursed blue, fire, washed over Chrysalis as she transformed into a copy of Cozy Glow. That's good, isn't it? She mocked in Cozy's voice. No, it's not good, you dolt. Hunger is a powerful motivator. Hunger drives the changelings forward to glory and power and conquest and- Did you know that your eyes are blue now, too? T-Rex asked. Chrysalis returned to her new, true form, and screamed. Chapter 4 Bargaining It's not all bad, Chrysalis intoned as the three made their way down the mountain, Chrysalis's new wings buzzing a completely unfamiliar buzz as she flew rather than walked. Cozy had taken to riding on T-Rex's shoulder. I mean... Okay, yes, Cozy, you have a point. I won't go hungry anymore, but I'm sure I can still steal love if I wanted to. She looked at Cozy, who had tucked the bell securely under her hat. Think about something you love. Don't listen to the changeling, Cozy, T-Rex said. She's in a mood. You'd be in a mood too, Chrysalis objected. What if you... what if you turn blue? I wouldn't let it bother me, T-Rex said imperiously. Oh, sure, I prefer being red, but blue has its charms, and it doesn't change who I am. Chrysalis huffed, brushing her voluminous new mane from her eyes. You could lose a boat in the thing. There must be something I can do to change back, she said, trying to bend her vast and incomparable and regal thousand-year-old intellect to the task. In fact... Ha! Yes! Cozy, think about something you love! You already asked me to do that, Cozy drawled. Yes, but that was to see if I could still eat love. I'm sure I can, but if I eat enough love, if I steal love like a proper changeling, then maybe I'll de-reform. That's not a word, Cozy pointed out. Ugh, you're just a kid, you don't know that. I think the term is deform, t Rag ventured. Or maybe revert might be better? Cozy, you were in a school most recently out of the three of us. You should know this. I... never... went to school. Chrysalis said. Seriously? Seriously? Tyrek and Cozy both asked, eyes wide. Hang on, what about that pony that lived at the bottom of this mountain? Chrysalis asked. Ha! Yes, him! He's my only hope! All I have to do is completely drain him of love. Then I'll turn back. I'm sure of it. Chrysalis flitted off down the mountain with all the speed she could muster. T-Rex and Cozy watched her. Two bits says this doesn't work. Cozy said. You're too young to gamble, T-Rex said. 
But I'll take that bet. It might. You never know. Chapter 5 Depression! T Rex had become a living taxi service as a Pegasus Philly, or something that might have been a Pegasus Philly anyway, sat on his shoulder and a morose reformed changeling queen laid sprawled across his back. <coughs> T-Rex or Cozy rolled her eyes, nor see T-Rex pass two bits to Cozy, who stuffed them into her jacket. He's gonna be okay though, right? Cozy asked. Of course he is! Chrysalis moaned as she continued to hang limply off of T-Rex. He'll wake up in a day with a headache. I even left him inside and tucked him in bed. Besides, that's what I have to do now. I'm reformed! What? Tyrek asked, stopping and looking back at Chrysalis. Chrysalis continued to stare at the ground. I'm reformed. I'm good now, don't you see? That's what all this fuzz and big poofy hair and bright colors mean. It means I have to be good. So I left a fire going in his fireplace, and I left him some cookies by his bedside. That's what a good creature would do. I think I'm new at it. Oh, for the love of... Yes! Chrysalis moaned. For the love. That's what I have to do. Her wings buzzed, and she picked herself up off of Derek's back. I have to go. I can't be part of Grogar's Legion of Doom anymore. I guess I should go live with Thorax. Or maybe see if I can move in with Cadence now. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll go and live with Cadence. I'll apologize for everything. I'll be Flurry Heart's nanny. I'll make her oatmeal and teach her how to pounce, or whatever nannies do for foals. The first thing, sure. The second, not so much. T-Rex reached up and grabbed Chrysalis's tail before she could fly off. He decided to not observe aloud how soft and smooth it was. You're not good! Recent major chromatic changes in my life suggest otherwise. You drained a pony completely of love and left him all alone! Sure, he might be fine, especially since you tucked him up and left him with a fire. But he might not be. That's not good. Ergo, you're not good. Chrysalis hovered in midair, still facing away from the two. Really? She asked. Really, really. Cozy said. I mean, that's more negligent than evil, but it's definitely not good. Chrysalis turned around. Her blue eyes were huge and full of tears. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! She cried, flitting down and pulling T-Rex and Cozy into as tight a hug as she'd ever given any creature, while not in disguise. You know, doing this will probably not help with the fact that you reformed, T-Rex said. Chrysalis broke away from the hug, realizing the truth. She landed on the ground and sat back on her haunches, twirling her front hooves around each other. So, what do we tell Grogar? 
Chapter 6 Acceptance Grogar? Chrysalis said, standing tall and proud before the ancient goat, T-Rex and Cozy Glow on either side of her for support. We went to Mount Everhoof. In the process of trying to retrieve your bell, I shared my magic with T-Rex. Since for a changeling, love and magic are the same thing, this meant that I... reformed. But I want you to know that I am still evil, or at least criminally negligent. I may look different on the outside, but it doesn't change who or what I am on the inside. Probably. I'm still willing to help your plans to destroy Twilight Sparkle, and Starlight's Glimmer, and Thorax especially, and all the rest. Rogar looked chrysalis up and down. It was a lot to take in, and she clashed worse with his decor than even Cozy Glow did. Chrysalis, you're my minion. And as my minion, I should tell you that I don't care about you or your problems. Where's my bell? Oh, that. We failed. Sorry, but I've been going through changes. A lot more than normal, I mean, but- You failed? Droga demanded, stomping his hoof. The free shrank back. Where's our almighty Grogar? Cozy exclaimed. We work together like you asked, T-Rex said, and pointed to Chrysalis as proof. We just weren't as powerful as you, Chrysalis added. And also, changes! Look at me! Grogar somehow resisted the urge to slam his own hoof into his face. Instead, he blasted a hole in the nearby wall with his magic. Looking at you gives me a headache. At least you finally did as you were told and worked together. Of course! Cozy said. Whatever you command! T-Rex said as Grogar stomped off for the hole he had made. Forget about that old bell! Chrysalis called after him. You were right. We're so much more powerful. When we work as a team. She made sure he was out of sight, then glanced back at the hidden bell and smiled. Cozy, meanwhile, panicked. Oh, thanks, Celestia. He didn't see it. She said, flitting over to the stalagmite they'd hidden it behind when Grogar had appeared much sooner than any of them had anticipated. They'd stuck it behind the first hiding place they could see, but they'd been lucky. I'll go hide this in the lake. I'll make sure you hide it in the lake, Tyrek added, following Cozy as she flitted off. I... will join you shortly, Chrysalis said. Chapter 8. Informing the Hated Ones Dear Thorax, I hate you with every fiber of my being. One day I will overthrow you and resume my rightful place as Queen of the Changelings, and on that day you and Starlight Glimmer and all your precious new friends will suffer. My vengeance shall be terrible, but it shall not be swift. Oh no, it will be long and protracted. That being said, I have some questions. As your queen, I demand they be answered. As far as I am aware, I remain the only changeling with hair. Is that true? If not, may I ask what shampoo that changeling is using? I'm trying something new with my mane and tail. What kind of cleaning agent do you recommend for reform changeling fuzz? Asking for a friend? No. Confident? No. Bug? I know. Reformed changelings generate their own love. Is there a limit to this, or... Can I expect each reformed changeling to gradually grow in power without limit? Can a reformed changeling be f full? I think you're a queen. Biologically, that's not a recognition. I... I hate you? Now. So, queen to queen, if you don't mind. I'll 
longer your wings? Because I think mine are longer. With hate and strangulation, your queen and mother, Chrysalis. Bonus chapter. Dear Chrysalis, I'm sorry that you feel that way, mother, but I hope one day we can grow past this and move on in our respective lives. I will, however, remain on guard against your plots for retaking the throne, as will my brother, General Pharynx, who I have also alerted to your message. As to your questions, 1. As far as I'm aware, you remain the only changeling with actual hair when in default form. Some of my subjects have been experimenting, but thus far their results indicate that their hair takes on the properties of a creature they are imitating. I'm not sure if this helps, but here you go. 2. Glossy Coats and Manes is a fairly popular brand among changelings at the moment. I've used it myself and find that it does the job admirably well. Your minion should be able to mail order a supply via the catalog. 3. As near as we've been able to determine so far, while we no longer feel hunger, constant or otherwise, for love, the upper capacity varies from changeling to changeling with a hard limit on the upper capacity to store stolen love. We're not sure what, if any, upper limit applies to freely given love. Only that there is su if there is such a limit, it is higher than our upper capacity to hold stolen love. Or so I'm told. Given that I have not stolen love for myself since Operation Canterlot Wedding. 4. According to Princess Twilight, biologically speaking, both Ferrix and I are male. Thus, I am a king and he is a prince. Granted, neither of us can change gender on a whim, so the point is probably moot in the grand scheme of things. However, to answer your question, my wings, while in the current base form, are three and one quarter standard horns long from the base tip. With love and regret, King Thorax. Yo, old hag. General Pharynx here. Thorax showed me the letter you sent. S seriously you reformed? You? I gotta find out how that happened. Still, reformed or not, I trust you about as far as I can throw Dragon Lord Ember's dad, so don't expect any sympathy from me. With mutual contempt, General Pharynx. The End Featuring the voices of Black Void Dragon as General Pharynx, Clever Hooves as T-Rex, Linea Q as Cozy Glow, Lotus Moon as Queen Chrysalis, Quinch as the Storyteller and Grogar, and Voltaic Sky as Forax. Queen Chrysalis Reforms, accidentally, was written by Rainbow Double Dash and published on the 30th of May 2019. Thank you for listening, and feel free to check out the description below for links to channels and other content by all the awesome actors who have participated in this audiobook. Have a great day, and be careful how you share your love.